And thank you so much, Bad Rocks, for the 10 month resub. 10 months of Wardy Kapopa. Feels good, man. Mess up Wardy Kapopa remote, though. Gotta call you out on it. Gotta call you out on it. Thank you so much for the 10 months, Bad Rocks. Do appreciate it. Let's go into the game. To the upper left hand side, our red is a player, my friends. This is dark. He's going up against the blue Protoss player to the bottom right hand side of the map. He's Hero. So Dark versus Hero game number one. Fresh best of free for us here, and obviously we just saw a little bit of Dark ZVP, a very aggressive set of ZVP games out of Dark, honestly, against Cyan. So now against Hero, top level Korean ZVP. Let's have a look to see what's going to be going on here in this one as we get this set up and ready to go over the next few minutes already. I mean, we just saw a game of Acid Plan, so Dark going to go Hatch Gas. Pool, followed by a very fast third hatch once again. So far, identical to what he did in the last game. Nice fast free hatchery. We'll see again if he's going to try and go for a Bane Bust here, or if he maybe has some other plans in the near future. Overlord is moving around, and you just have this Overlord of Dark also coming down to the south side. Stargate from here will start on up, and a Stalker on the way out too. Going to be popping in towards the main base and try and take that Overlord down. In any second, there it is. So, Stalker pops out, pops in towards the main, and again starts to target down that Overlord right away. Starting to get some damage done. Stalker is uh, going to get rid of the Overlord pretty quick, which means we might see an Oracle first out of Hero here on the Stargate, which is kind of unique. And we are going to be seeing the uh, Overlord is about to drop. So, Overlord drops, and now we see a Bane and Nest from Dark currently on the way up as well. So, Bane and Nest coming through. We do have that third hatchery about to finish from Dark also. So third hatchery finishes up here. Link speed's about halfway done. And obviously with 23 drones, it seems to be the number which he just cuts and goes into that Bane and Nest, just goes in towards this Link Bane all in. So going in towards the Link Bane, a queen injects onto the natural as well. And, well, here we go. 20 Lings on the way up. Bane and Nest is about to finish. This all in is getting really ready to go in the next few moments. So this is uh, setting on up here. We are going to be seeing those couple lings. Just going to poke forwards, see exactly what they can get up to. Sorry, I'm trying to micro my other PC to get into Rogue Alive. A couple of depths then at the front already picking off the first zerg. And the issue is these other lings are kind of spread themselves to the left, to the right. The Oracle is heading in towards the main base. As the Oracle heads in towards the main base here, we are going to be seeing it coming in for a little bit of damage. A couple of Queens will come through. Sees the Bane and Nest, though. Pulls back immediately here. I realizes he needs to defend. Already puts the Shield Battery in his wall. A second one as well. So it's a wall off over here, but what do you actually have in reality? I mean, another Oracle's on the way up. Another Shield Battery coming through. First Oracle does have some energy to help out, but this is so many Banelings coming towards the front. And they burst through right away, and there's Banes left over to head towards the Mineral Line and Hero. He's a little bit late to pull the probes away as well, honestly. Now these probes are doing laps around the Nexus, and you do see the final things used up. Hero really needs to replug the wall off, though. He needs to wall off once again, otherwise he's in a lot of trouble. Does get a warp in down, and Dark's going to start drawing up. He realizes that maybe he can't get too much more damage done, so instead, he's just going to make drones rather than trying to continue with this attack. A few Banes in the main base, a couple in the natural. Honestly, Hero's a little bit out of position to deal with either of those at the moment. First Banes into the main, they're going to do some damage right here, and that's actually a chunk of workers once again. Hero's down to 22 probes now. He will stop this Baneling, or at least he'll... Well, there's only one Baneling, so he'll get one probe here. That's pretty much all he can get. 21 probes to 36 drones. It's a good work account at the moment here as we get ourselves ready for the uh, next stage of this. Two Oracles coming across the map. I mean, Dark definitely put himself into a bit of a lead in terms of the economy, but honestly, we'll see what these Oracles can do. I mean, they come in right away, and there's two workers. He gets three in the end. He's a little bit messed up because he didn't realize his first Oracle was going to run out of energy. And if he'd realized that, then obviously he could have actually maybe targeted down that first run a little bit longer and actually gotten the kill rather than just bringing it to half hit points. And two Oracles still just sat up on the top side. These are Death Moving Forwards. A couple of things going to start going down, so some more damage being dealt here. I mean, this is again the opportunity for Hero to really get back in the game. He shades in towards the main base, and he's going to target down a few drones here too. He's actually going to go for some of the Zerglings, actually. But in fairness, there's not many Zerglings up right now, so it's not a bad idea, because then you can follow up by targeting the drones. He's going to shade back out. He's actually lost two of the Adepts, so he's only got two left over. 
a few adepts coming out. Does he have glaives with this? No, he's just going for it because I guess adepts are the best way he has of killing drones at the moment. He lost another few probes over here too. I'm not sure what too. Maybe Bane's in the main? I'm actually not sure, but he definitely lost another couple of workers. And right now he's not even making more probes. It feels as though he's kind of just all in with adept production, but obviously it's 19 uh, probes, so it's not that great. He's making some more probes. Now he gets back down in towards the uh, mineral line of the natural. Honestly, again, like, Hero's getting a fair amount of damage done. Just the fact he lost another couple probes here or there. Little bits and pieces of damage like that's really hurting him. This war prism still in the main. Gonna try and be useful yet again, but Queen's coming over. We'll deny it now. Hero down 20 workers. Unfortunately, it's just whatever damage he's done here has just not been enough. He's not quite found what was needed in this. So, having to pull back with these uh, Zerglings dark. Oh, sorry, these Zerglings going off on the map to counterattack and try and do something. Two Adepts and Zealot in the wall off, though. Meanwhile, Temple Archives is coming up too in this uh, main base. More links going to come over to the left hand side, and all of these units just gathering up together. Melee upgrade starting up from Dark here as well. So, again, that melee upgrade going, still going to really kind of just benefit the Ling Bane playstyle. High Templar's on the way out, but the Templar Archive's now finished. He's able to come in here, and he's able to get himself some damage done, perhaps, as he morphs in the Archons. Obviously, the Archon drop has always been a very potent way to kind of play out PvZ. We'll see if Hero can find enough with it here, because again, he's definitely playing from a deficit. He's definitely playing from a difficult position. Are the Archons his answer? Are well, he going to lose an Oracle here? No way does he keep that Oracle alive. I don't even know how that makes sense. The Oracle was literally dead. It was on top of like five queens and it stayed alive. It's not how that works. That's not how that should work anyways. It's kind of crazy. Anyways, Banelings are going to be finishing up here and they're going to be approaching the front of the natural. I mean, this uh, Archon job's taking so long to get going. He had to wait a long time before morphing into his second Archon. And our Depths is going to go down to these Banes and once again Ling Bane in the natural and Hero's in a lot of trouble right now. Oracle's on their way home to try and help defend, but... Where do you really go to for the best at the moment as we see those Banes are being caught up? Honestly, the Banes aren't doing that much damage just yet. Obviously, there's still some more potential for more damage to be done. All Probe's going to have to uh, come and fight over here. Do you see the Banes being shut down by the Oracles? What a defense this was so far. But he loses the Warp Prism at the same time. That's the issue. So difficult to control your harassment while also dealing with this attack. Hero is going to type out GG. Well, it wasn't a disastrous attack from Dark. Let's do this. Dark versus Hero, and up a game to the top left side of the map. Our red Zerg player is Dark. And he's going up against, up against the blue Protoss to the bottom right hand side of the map from Root Gaming. It's Hero. Getting to the best of three. Let's see what happens here. Tough first game for Hero. First Ling Bane attack really did just so much damage that I put Dark into quite the lead and despite his attempts to counter-attack and harass it just wasn't enough in the end. And you could see, you know, he was you know, he just didn't have the units to realistically defend another just small wavering bane while he was still again his Archon drop shut down completely as well at the same time, so pretty uh, tough situation. Let's see if he can improve on it here in game two. Dark is a two-time uh, Kung Fu Cup uh, finalist, one-time champion keeps beating Rogue in the finals, which is a possibility again here today. If he was to uh, go all the way to the finals and Rogue was too, they would meet there once more They're on different sides of the bracket. You just have this drone moving around. It's an interesting drone. Don't usually see drones like this. Is he going to proxy a hatch? What's the plan here? Why have a drone on this side of the map? There's just no real immediate reason for it. Next is coming down. I mean, is it just a scout? Is that the plan? Is that the gameplay here? I really don't know. Is it a block of wall? I, I, I just can't quite figure out what you would want this drone over here for. You know, it's a drone that loses mining time. You don't usually see a drone coming across the map from Zerg. It's strange. It's very strange. Well, we're coming down to the south side. There is the proxy hatchery, so I mean... There you go, I mean, something had to happen here for this drone to be across the map. Nothing else really made much sense. This hatchery's on its way up, though, so... We'll see what comes of it. I mean, I guess a Rotron, I suppose. Um, I I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Alright. Well, this hatchery's on its way. 
see what comes of this. What's up, Drizzle? I see in the chat says, got to meet Wardy in Austin. It was dope, and thanks. No problem, man. Awesome. Honestly, Austin was super awesome. Like, being able to... Uh, I got to meet so many people in Austin. It was really cool. Like, got to meet so many people. So many people came up and said hello. It was really sick, so... Loved it. Great event. Alright, meanwhile, we do see this adept coming across the map. Again, currently just no vision at all of this third hatch. Like, it's so weird. I just, I mean, there's the roach run, so I guess we kind of see what's happening. It's going to be like a roach lingle in with the roaches built on this hatch on the south side. Talk just being a little bit crazy today. A little bit crazy, a little bit kind of aggro. Showing us just something a little bit different that we don't expect to usually see. Meanwhile, the stalker works its way through this overlord, so overlord is going to be taking some damage here as well. It's going to be dropping pretty quickly. So overlord taking some shots, and we are going to be seeing that going down. Third hatch is, again, I mean, it's up. The roaches are building. And Hero just doesn't know about it, right? I mean, he saw the lack of a third base, which is maybe some sort of cause for alarm. Look at what Hero's doing, though. He's going into super fast Twilight Counts with Charge. I can't feel as though that's really going to help out. As we see those adepts, they spot the proxy hatchery. Well, now Shield Battery should start to come on up to help defend this here. Shield Batteries, extra gateways, etc. I mean... Let's see what he can do. First Stalk and a couple of Adepts are going to have to be part of the wall off, really, because otherwise the Lings are going to get us around. I don't think this is exactly how Hero imagined this going. Nice Force will do something for him, but he does lose the, uh, he does lose the sentries, so that's expensive nonetheless. And this Pro's trying to surround this Ravager. If you can stop the Ravager coming up, it takes a long time to build, but... Now it's a lot of wasted damage time, because he really did try to stop the Ravager from building here, but still managed to finish. First Shield Battery under fire. I guess at the same time, though, two pylons, the shield battery over here. This is actually still a pretty safe position for Hero. He's got a lot of kind of, you know, defense on this. Probes are going to make it past the cross of before it lands. Probes are going down, though, and that's the issue, right? I mean, soon it's going to be a probe lead or work lead for Dark. Link's starting to stream in, makes this difficult as well. Zealot warping in, too, does have charge. Doesn't really manage to do too much with it. Another Zealot starts to warp in. The issue is Hero's had probes off the line to try and help defend, and that does hurt his income. Not many roaches left, though. The shield batteries are definitely going to continue holding this on. Has Hero made this happen? I think he has. Finding out about that third hatchery just in time to stop the shield batteries has been absolutely essential for him. And now as that Zelt charges forwards, I mean, there's still some creep here, but honestly, it's starting to look a lot better, right? Because Hero has the gateway numbers to really push this back. And there we go, Queens, Ravager, Ling has been pushed all the way away. A couple of Ling's thinking about diving in towards the natural, but it doesn't quite happen. And now this hatchery goes down, cancels the roaches here. Realizes they're just going to get picked off, and you know, he was a little bit indecisive. Does he go across the map? Does he stick around? This is a shame. He lets Lings into the main and natural, and that shouldn't happen. He'll recall in towards the main base to deal with it, though. In a way, I wonder if it was somewhat of a... I'd like to say it was something of like a bait, like, haha, I've got your Lings trapped, but at the same time, well, I guess in the end it is, because he does get the Zelt on the wall off, so I guess it works out. These Zelts just continue to uh, charge... Uh, Zeglins continue to run around. Zelts try and charge them down. Only three things left over. It buys Dark some time, though. I like this, though. Hero did leave a few units over here, so he doesn't have to worry too much. Brooklyn's actually going to get a Stalker kill. It's not really what should happen. I feel like initially the idea from Hero was to go across the map and just to straight up kill Dark then and there, but he decided to get the hatchery just in case it caused more issues, and I like that. I don't think there was any need for... I, I, I mean, it, it's kind of like it works both ways, because I think going across the map would have actually worked wonderfully. I think it works, you know... It goes very well for him. I think, you, you know, you you look at the kind of outcome, and there's a pretty positive outcome in general. As you do see the uh, Zards on the way up towards uh, the top side of the map. Let's hallucinate Phoenix in towards the main base, and have a little bit of scout around here. This Queen going to be uh, fighting away at that Phoenix. So it's actually going to come back home. So for now, I'm just going to sit back. The Robo has finished up, so he's going to get an Immortal out here. was just a little bit supply blocked. I would imagine... That, uh, I would imagine that we're going to be seeing the, uh, the big attack here soon. You know, when he gets one, maybe two immortals, then the prism. I think that's the point at which you just sort of go for this. Hero makes a bit of a mistake. He actually loses a zealot while chopping down the rocks. That hurts. And that just doesn't, you know, that sort of just sucks. Loses a zealot for no real reason. Definitely avoidable. I'm not just going to have this uh, set of rocks going to be uh, picked away at now. Templar Archives on the way down in the main base as well from Hero. And we are going to be seeing again these last few units just continue to pick away at the rocks. They will go down. And Hero, I still like his spot. You know, drone count is good. He's getting Templar Archives as well. 
wonder if he just doesn't go aggro. Maybe he just sits back on the fact that his opponent is on two bases. That's actually a pretty big deal here, I guess. The lack of a third hatch from Dark really means he is, you know, heroes in no rush to end the game because without a third hatchery, Dark is not going anywhere. You know, Dark is really only going to have army, and so attacking into a two base player doesn't really make sense. You know, why not attack into them when he goes up to three base? Makes a lot more sense. These Zards going to have to run away because Roaches are already on the hunt. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the time to get rid of the third hatch, which has just been placed, so a little bit of a shame. As heroes still just gathering up out the front right now. Another couple of High Temple have been warped in as well. Seven more Roaches currently on the way up now from Dark. Roach speed and plus one missiles. So that's actually dove in for the third half to get the cancel, which is nice. Loses a couple of Zelds, but I think at this stage, so worthwhile to just slow Dark down even further in terms of economy. Nero has his own third Nexus on the way up. He actually puts it down on the right side, which is why he dropped those rocks down and cleared them out, so that it doesn't become an issue for him at any point to move around that side. And if a couple of High Temple continue to come along here, Burrow on the way up, plus one missiles, also tunneling close. All of this coming along right now as we see a few more Zarts just on the way up. A High Templar too. And all of this is going to be gathering together right now. I see a lot of Roaches at the moment coming in the left hand side from Dark. A lot of Roaches coming on over to the left. Lucinated Phoenix gets rid of an Overlord as well. Oh, Dark, his third hatch is only just now coming up to completion. He will have burrowed roaches, which is something that can definitely cause some trouble. It's definitely the kind of harassment technique which could potentially bring him back into this game, which he's been kind of dead in for a little while now. Roaches just sat over here, as we do see more roaches around the right side. More prism is on the way up. In general, as the ball prison comes up, obviously aggression can start up from the Protoss player and go across the map and get something done, but as he moves across, I'm a little bit worried because of the fact there's Borrowed Roaches here. Although, well, the cannon at the front, so at least you'll see it coming in pretty quickly. And you see the first Roaches coming in on the right-hand side, so here's Dark's play, trying to make his way back into this game. Again, the issue here is that, uh, well, there's a cannon, but there isn't actually any units to help out, and so... That would be nice of that Protoss player. There they are. They're on the south side of the Nexus. And again, the Burrow is definitely going to make things a little bit troubling right now. His hero has not really responded. Okay, now he sees some units coming over, but it's quite a lot of roaches for the number of units he sent over. Doesn't really feel like he's got enough there. Roaches on this side are going to start going down thanks to the, uh, well, Immortals being pretty good against roaches. Lots of Zelts in the main base warped in with another Immortal just popped out, but he's actually got this Immortal stuck. And that pylon is powering everything around here right now, so you can't really just pick it off and uh, let his Immortal through. Meanwhile, Roaches are going to find themselves the Forge, so that's actually quite nice as well, plus two attack. Good night for the moment. Now Dark going in towards the Swarm Hosts. Well, you know, Hero is in this weird position where I don't know if he's really got the units to deal with the Swarm Host Locust. I feel like the Swarm Host Locust could definitely come around and be very, very, very annoying this game. One of those scenarios where I feel like the first wave gets quite a bit of damage done, and I think he just keeps going. Then again, I guess we do have those high tempo with Storms available. That's going to be very important here to clean this up as the first wave of Locust starting to drop down. First Storm is good. Second Storm, well, actually, the Locust do a pretty good job of splitting. It takes about two or three Storms to clean it up, but it does survive, you know, keep Hero alive for the moment, at least. So Hero's kept alive. And we are going to be seeing the, uh, well, Alcons. High Templar Immortals coming up the right side. Finding these roaches in the main are starting to be dealt with. 58 probes still alive from Hero here. This one Immortal trapped really needs to be careful. This rally point needs to be very careful because if he pops out in the wrong, you know, in the wrong way, who knows what could happen. A few High Templar are uh, storming already, getting rid of the first few Locusts. It's kind of nice because the Locusts or the Swarm Hosts were actually a little bit out of sync, so not all the Locusts coming in at the same time. You can see the free split on the Locusts here is kind of cute as well, but again, the Storms are very good and a few Swarm uh, Locusts that do drop down are not really going to cut it, and now Dark doesn't have enough at all. All of these Swarm Hosts are on cooldown. We have Swarm Hosts on cooldown. This third base is going to fall. I mean, Zelda's already making their way through a little bit of the army over here. Might want to try and get the Immortals on top of the Swarm Hosts would be fantastic. These Swarm Hosts come off cooldown and are a little bit worried for, the, for Hero, actually, because you know, he doesn't have any Storms left, and that was definitely one of the big things that was keeping him alive against the Locust. So, yeah, I think Swarmers coming off cooldown could be a big thing, and maybe he should just back away towards the third base, work his way through that rather than anything else, because, again, these Locusts are coming back any second now. There they are, Dark. He was waiting for them. He knew that was the one thing he needed to fight this back now, and, well, now these Immortals are going to die. He's going to try and warp in. 
Dragon's going to have a little bit of micro on the wall because we keep these Immortals alive. The Locusts are just about kind of pushing through, though. And Hero loses a lot here in the end, and Hero's messed this up massively. He could have killed the third base, but he just dove for the natural. He knew the Swarm Horse were going to be coming back off cooldown, and I just can't imagine why he continued to commit forwards like that. That's painful. That's really painful now as we see this Warp Prism heading towards the main base. But now the Locusts are off cooldown, and now what's at home? Well, High Templars don't even have energy for Storm yet. So this is not looking pretty at all as we do see this Archon is about halfway through. Hero has really messed up his opportunity here, it feels like. These uh, Swarm Hosts continue coming down to the south side. Maybe set a Locust. Going to be popping on along and diving down towards some of this here. Yes, so I don't know, Archon, I mean, well, there's the High Templars already stormed, but there's only, what, two storms left now after this one fades? It's really not that much, and there's Roaches here to deal with as well, though I guess there is a couple of Immortals. That's the last storm that have just been used right there. So this is already kind of painful. Probe's going down as well. Across the map, there's a couple of Immortals trying to find some sort of damage. Swarm was just sat in the center. They're going to wait right there for the cooldown to come off. Roaches are still sat here as well. And these Immortals still going huge on these few Roaches. Getting a lot of damage done as we see Swarm Hosts of Dark going to continue along and I'm well, just going to continue pushing to see what more they can achieve here, I guess. Queen pushes the Warp Prism back away to the left-hand side and we are going to be seeing these last couple of Roaches on the right-hand side are going to go down as well. So that's something at least, but now the Swarm Hosts are going to start taking down the Natural. Takes down two Gateways, going to make his way through a couple of units that are over here. Again, if he gets a couple of high tempo, that's fantastic. And Hero loses one, two, and maybe three. Just doesn't quite get there in the end. He was still flying around with this prism. 35 drones from Dark. His economy still isn't amazing. It's just the fact that he has Swarm Hosts. The Swarm Hosts are just so efficient. It's the one thing that's keeping him alive right now. Warp Prism, Micros, he's immortal. He loses one of them, though. So it's charging forwards. Finds himself a couple of Ravages right at the front line. Backs away, though, because of the sheer number of Roaches. Realizing that this is not going to be a pretty fight if he sticks around. There's the Locust as well, and that's what he really has to avoid. But he does force the Locust to pop on the top side. By forcing the Locust to pop up on the top side, it means now that he's going to be able to, you know, not, you know, he doesn't have to fight them for a little while, though then he turns to fight, and it feels like a bit of a desperation moment from Hero. He doesn't really want to fight here. There's no way on earth he thought, like, hey, this is a great fight for me. He just kind of had to, I guess, to try and save some units. I don't know. I think it would have been better off still just running away. You know, once the Locusts expire, he's got, what, like 20, 30 seconds until, you know, Locusts are back, so then he can push forwards a bit again. Right now, it just feels like the Hero hasn't really traded well enough throughout the entirety of these games. And now, well, he's a model still doing time. Keep on fighting some Roaches, pushing forwards. The Locusts off cooldown any second now, and that means pretty much the end of these Immortals. I mean, what do you do now? As these Immortals just take damage as they go. Roaches are chasing as well, and even the Prism kind of juggling effect is not going to be enough to save all of this here. You can only save so much, you can only juggle so much. And well, the Roaches keep on chasing down a crazy game out of Dark. I mean, felt as though Hero had the lead from the early game, felt as though Hero had opportunities to just kill the third base and just win the game basically against the Swarm Horse not long ago. But he made mistakes, and that's what sends Dark through to the round of 8. Dark 2-0 here.